Jamie, OK, and thank you for taking this hour out of your Tuesday evening to, to join us. I mean, I always think, you know, you put these workshops and webinars on on an evening and it's brilliant to to have you turning up because obviously it shows your keenness in improving the quality of surfaces and um, pitches relating to your clubs and organisations. Just a couple of things. If we could turn off cameras and, and microphones, um, that'd be really helpful just because we don't want any, just because it's being recorded, we don't want any background sounds or um, people that pop up into the presentation with the um, cameras that don't need to be there. So moving forward, thanks for the introduction, Emma. I am Daniel. I've been with the GMA now since May 2019. Before that, um, I was working in, um, I was working at Wembley um, as the assistant head groundsman, was there for two years. That was the period that we had Tottenham there. Uh, before that, I was over in, in Wales, in Swansea, working at the Liberty Stadium where we had um, Swansea City Football Club and also Ospreys, so it's a dual code stadium. Um, and before that, I spent my time working in a, in a private school in, in Oxford as a, as a groundsman. Um, so I do have a, a, a kind of a, a varied level of um, grounds experience all the way up from grassroots which I'm working at now, all the way up to elite. And I always make the point that everybody is is trying to to do the same thing. You look at the people on the pitch here, on the you know the practices that these guys are doing at Spurs Stadium is exactly the same as that. You're 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 trying to kind of you, we're all working to the same objective, and I I really think that's important to hold dear in the challenges, especially entering this time of year when it's kind of you know look, you look outside and you look at the temperature at the moment and we're currently at four degrees outside at the moment so yeah it's a it's a challenge all over and the weather has been kind to us up until now but these are the really kind of um proof is in the pudding times as we move forward um so i've been working with emma in in surrey for i think just over nine months now since the program's changed um, previously i was covering greater london uh, football and cricket but the program's changed slightly from what was um, the grounds and natural turf improvement program. It's now kind of just got a bit of a better uh, name, the the pitch advisory service, which is far less mm. of a mouthful. So now I cover the southeast region solely working in football. Um, I much prefer it to be honest with you because it's it was difficult to kind of have that cricket and um, football cross hat on, um, but now solely working on on football allows me to kind of rein in focus and work closely with Emma and um, the likes of the the football foundation to to really you know assist grassroots clubs. Um, so what is the pitch advisory service? Well, it, as I mentioned, it was called the Grounds and Natural Turf Improvement Program. Um, it started back in 2014. Um, it included the GMA FA. Um, rugby, e, rugby league, ECB, and Sport England. Um, we moved into phase two of the program in 2017, and that was sole football and cricket. And now, obviously, it's changed, as I mentioned. And we have got Sport England back on board, the Football Foundation, the GMA, the ECB, um, and we've got rugby union and rugby league on board now. So this is really a, um, you know, a national program to kind of kickstart and, and improve grassroots pitches, cross sport, um, all up and down um, England. There, there is a plan in the, in the future to to bring more sports on in, in on it, and uh, a lot of you will now be familiar with pitch power. Um, pitch power is essentially the assessment tool. Um, there's just not enough regional advisors to, to cover all of uh, all of the sports. So we've kind of put the power um, back into your hands. Um, I'll cover off a little bit on pitch power um, later on in the presentation. Um, so, yeah, as I said, uh, in, in terms of football, um, the GMA is a not-for-profit membership organisation supporting uh, grassroots um, volunteers and professional um, grounds people all up and down the country. Um, we provide um, 
levels of training, qualifications, short courses, and as well, we're you know we we kind of act as a a spokesperson for for the industry, and we're a membership organisation. Um, in terms of the support that the support that's available through um, the GMA, we, we, we're brilliant to have two um, support pitch advisors on board. Um, they they are happy to assist in in visits and as a we'll touch on later um, pitch power assessments and um, we can provide impartial support um, advice and recommendations we're not tied to or affiliated to anybody so really we just want the best um, for yourselves there's no kind of sales involved in it or any or anything can this can include um renovation information general maintenance guidance which i'll touch on at the end of the presentation in terms of giving you trying to give you some tips to assist you um, with maintaining the pitches throughout this difficult period that we've entered through the winter uh, machinery recommendations and, and training and events and you might be familiar with soltex um, which was in early november if you weren't able to um, get there this year, it's it's really worth having a look on YouTube at the exhibitors because they often put up videos. Um, but do try and get there in the, in the future because it's a brilliant trade show and it kind of does bring everything together under one roof um, at the NEC in Birmingham. So we talk about um, support, and I've mentioned a couple of you know areas where the GMA can support, and, and Emma um, from a county um, FA can support as well um, we'll talk about a uh, football foundation here um, the football foundation is the charity partner of the fa um, dcms and and the premier league and uh, I, I imagine a lot of the clubs on this call will be familiar with them and perhaps have received funding previously whether that was funding for um, machinery uh, or um, there was a there was the funding um, last year, which was the pit pre um, pitch preparation fund, which was aimed at getting pitches back in order after obviously the lockdowns um, due to COVID. Uh, but more recently, with um, they've launched the grass pitch improvement strategy, um, which is a ten year um, enhanced maintenance plan to improve your pitches. Uh, the so you can you can see the figures there, uh, and it's and it's really groundbreaking this in in terms of what was previously available in um you know there was there was support in terms of small grants to assist clubs and organizations purchase um, machinery and and that's still available and i would urge you know anyone to kind of consider both options before signing up for the maintenance or or the equipment package or actually you know best case scenario is you you, you kind of enroll in the maintenance plan you know, in two to three years down the line, you're actually looking as a club to be more sufficient, um, self-sufficient and sustainable to, to kind of bring a lot of the practices that were being outsourced previously by contractors, perhaps to bring them in house. Um, and then you do kind of, you know, gain control of your own pitch and you're not reliant on a contract to cutting your pitch or um, obviously maintenance, uh, sorry, renovation practices is quite different. Um, in terms of you know you really do need expert um, knowledge to, to carry those out and obviously you know the machinery uh, is is that much more than a, a compact tractor or, or slitter um, but yeah just do, do familiarize yourself with the um, foundation's website familiarize yourself with pitch power which I'll run through in, in a while and um, just look at all your options in terms of you know the, the 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 kind of longer medium to longer term plan short term plan is brilliant that there's money available for um, maintenance operations uh, but do do think kind of medium to long term in terms of where you want to be as a club in five to ten years and what you're able to perform um, in house and with that um, you know myself and Emma and the support pitch advisors and the GMA are looking to well the GMA do have training courses available and and I hope a couple of you would have been on them. It's a condition of the grant funding to do the winter pitches online uh, level one course. Um, and as your pitch improves, um, you know, we do offer the level two and the level three course, which kind of is enhance, enhancing knowledge to, to kind of keep you at a level um, and skill set where you can maintain that pitch to a higher standard. 
and that's what we aim for really to um, to improve your pitch from a poor or basic standard to be able to sustain um, a good standard. Daniel, can I just ask a question on that? Yeah, go for it. Um, so with the obviously with the contractors coming out and doing doing the work, are that obviously we have a couple that we could recommend or or put you in contact with, but it would. Would they give advice as well to people that have received the funding on how they can continue to maintain those pitches? Yeah, for sure. And the do you know the good contractors do have that to heart, uh, and you know we're aware of good contractors that work in Surrey. And hopefully, you know you've got a good contractor that's previously carried out um, works on your pitch. Obviously, we can't be everywhere at once, and we judge, uh, you know, your pitch on the pitch power inspections, and we do kind of provide the impartial. Uh, maintenance recommendations to 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 be carried out, but you know obviously if your contractor you know you, you have decompaction recommended and the contractor turns up to to do it and you've had three days of solid rain, fingers crossed you know he's gonna or she is gonna steer clear and say well actually these conditions aren't correct to do it um, at the moment because everything in, in in grounds is is not as straightforward as it seems in terms of. Um, you know, you, you can often think you're taking one step forward in, in having an operation performed, but if the conditions aren't right, you're actually taking two steps back. So, yeah, by all means, Emma, you know, do I, I do urge clubs to form good relationships with contractors, speak to your other clubs as well in the leagues and, and finding out who's um, using who, you know, even in terms of pricing, you know, it's kind of, you know, we can't really, we can assist and we can, you know, offer direction, but we can't recommend contractors and and it's up to you, you know, the, the money that you draw down from your um, funding is paid up front and, and when you do receive that, it, it's up to you how you spend it and it's it's a case of really thinking about it wisely and, and you know, picking the right opportunities to have works performed, speaking to trusted contractors to find out who's operating in the area, do they have flexibility and you know, in, in terms of their um, time scales of performing works, and you know, are, are is it being are the works being performed to um, you know decent specification in terms of slitting depth, um, travelling speed, you know, of decompaction operations, or you know, what fertilizers going down, what top dressings going down. So, you know, feel free. Once once you complete your pitch power report, that that isn't the end of the journey. You know we're here to support you. <coughs> and if you do kind of, you know, receive a quotation, feel free to pass it over to Emma or myself, or you know, as you as the support pitch advisors come on board to form relationships with them, and um, yeah, just pick up the phone or, or send an email over and say, you know, I can't stress enough, we're here to support you along this journey, and it's not a case of throwing money at a problem because we know. That isn't the be all uh, uh, an end all of a solution. It's a case of, you know, guiding you in terms of how best to spend that money, but also providing that education and that training throughout, so you know where your money's being spent and it's being spent wisely in terms of performing the tasks, um, you know, at the right times of year. I can't stress that enough. So, yeah, I mean, I hope that answers the the question that you've got, Emma. But yeah, I mean, we're here to support throughout. Brilliant. The only the other thing I was just going to add to that, Daniel, is um, if if anyone on this call does, and I I say this because I saw Paul from Camberley jump on join the call, but if anyone does have any good success with their grass pitch imp improvement, do send us pictures of before and after across because as a county, and I'm sure Daniel would like to see them as well. Do send them across because we can use that to help promote the benefits of this program as well. So we love to hear about it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you're if you have if you do like a, a chat we can have you on the next webinar because that would be brilliant to showcase some of the before and afters on the um on the next webinar and kind of you know from you know a grounds point of view and being out in the field and working with clubs you can really you know give us insight to how you know any challenges that you faced or and share that information with clubs because it is really you know a community that we're trying to form and um yeah just want everybody to kind of get the best out of it that they can so with with the enhanced maintenance works i mean this slide's been up for a little while now so you probably have a good read through um 
there is a there is a requirement to submit um, to pitch power assessments annually. Um, anybody that does enter into funding, and the compulsory one with the compulsory window we've just entered. I mean, you know, you look at those other dates, and it's a case of um, you know September. The pitches are probably looking brilliant, and and same into May. So we really do want to see it at the nitty gritty end in terms of well, how are they performing throughout the winter? Uh, they might look brilliant, lovely and striped up in the summer, but we want to kind of iron out um, where where things are and, and get a true reflection. You know, they're brilliant when they look brilliant and play brilliant, but, you know, back end of February when, you know, you, you're just urging kind of that sunshine back in and those warmer temperatures um, back up, um, you know, that's when things can, can really struggle. Um, yeah, and the funding rate for the the maintenance, we you can see the figures um, there. So it's up to two and a half grand um, per pitch, full size eleven in years one and two, and that decreases to sixty six percent in years three and four, thirty three percent in years five and six, and thereafter um, it's a ten year agreement that the pitch will be maintained to a good standard. Now we don't want to scare you off in terms of having that funding drop off because realistically with the support and we keep mentioning that word support and guidance you know by years three and four hopefully you're going to be in a good place where the pitch is improved we've figured out you know good um, maintenance recommendations and best practice uh, in terms of things are being done you know, in the right conditions to the right level at the right times, um, to, you know, and, and at the right amount as well. And you've had that initial kickstart to get the pitches back up to the condition that they should be, uh, you know, in terms of that good that good um, condition. But there, you know, thereafter, it, it's not a kind of fundamental that you have to f continue funding that pitch uh, two and a half grand a year because by that stage, hopefully you've you've brought some practices in house, uh, and you know, with the increase in quality, you are going to see, um, you know, an increase in um, use that the pitch can sustain. So, you know, think of these pitches like they're your asset, really. And if you if you maintain them well, you're going to get more from them. Therefore, the club can grow, or therefore you can kind of offer the pitch out um, on a per hire basis. Um, you know, so it does kind of in increase potential revenue streams as well. And and um, you, you you know you you just have to look at the broader picture really in terms of what it can do for you. Uh, in terms of you know what you put into it is often what you get back out of it, and uh, a, a poor pitch can sustain far less. Uh, use than than a good pitch. Um, is there anything in the chat box, Emma? Before we move on to the next next slide. Not at the moment, Daniel. But do pop questions in there, and we can we can pass them on to Daniel as they come up. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so I spoke about the the support that's available. If you're not familiar with the Hive, please do have a you know make a make a cup of tea or coffee and spend half an hour you know, looking through the the comms that are on here um, and the uh, um, maintenance essential slides. So the Hive was launched, I think, about a year and a half ago now. Um, we had a soft launch. It's um, the Foundation's website and it's a groundskeepers um, community. So all of the regional pitch advisors, such as myself and my colleagues throughout the country, are active on there. Um, there's maintenance essential um, cards on there in terms of like there's learning tips and, and tricks, you know, treat it as a resource if you kind of, um, you know, want to early season, you want to mark, mark the pitches out and you're not sure of the dimensions, you know, all of that information's on there, you know, information on top dressing and how to get the best from seeding and goal mouth repairs. Really, when you re receive your pitch power report, that's just the kind of, um, opening and you might want to look more into di different decompaction operations the you know the benefits of brushing your pitch you know why would we brush the pitch and what height should we be cutting at there's all of this information not only in your pitch power report but on the hive learning um 
as Emma said earlier, we're recording this and this can you, you're free to um, watch this again, but I'll also get these slides out to you and the links that I speak about. Um, information on, you know, obviously on, on Twitter and other social medias, you do get news and the funding um, signposts um, up there. But I think the biggest thing with the, the Hive and why it's so brilliant is because all of the RPAs are active on there. If you post a question, very likely you will get an answer, you know, within hours. You can also post photos if there's something that doesn't look right on the pitch. You've kind of got a goal mouth that's holding water. You've got a, you know, maybe, uh, you know, an area that looks like it's a little bit off, a little bit of yellowing, a little bit of kind of, you know, another disease that you're concerned about. Post it up, you know, and you'll get a response from, uh, you know, a regional pitch advisor. But also, not only that, you know, there's 2,700 plus people on there. And, and everyone's got such a wealth of knowledge and you'll get other clubs elsewhere in the country saying, oh, we experienced that. This is what we did to com you know, to combat that. Or, you know, th this we had a, um, a brilliant kind of um, a piece that was that was covered a, a couple of um, month months ago, I think it was. And um, a guy called Wesley had made this homemade homemade drag brush that they put to put on the back of his, his tractor and then everybody wanted to make one and he put the designs up and everybody had met, started posting photos of their um, homemade brushes that they'd, that they'd made to go on the back of their tractor or um, triple for cutting. It was so, yeah, dude, uh, you know, these these resources are available to help you um, and, you know, similar that you've got the, the kind of you'd have some grass seed in your shed, you'll have, you know, mower you'll have um you know whatever else bits of dressing do treat these as tools these these are extra tools to add to your um you know bank the other thing that's available as well and and this is the gma's website is the gma's toolkit uh so whereas the hive is soul football um the toolkit is multi-sport so if you you've got an interest in cricket or rugby league or U rugby union and um the one thing that this toolkit doesn't have is the interactivity uh you, so you 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 can't post it's a resource library um essentially uh do check it out though because it has got a lot of football information on there um so you know use both the hive and the gma's toolkit and i'll get the links out um to you uh, we do, you know, this, the, the development of these is ongoing um, and, you know, by all means, you know, similar to, to the Hive, we do case studies on, on different grounds. Um, so it's really good to kind of, you know, treat it like, a, you know, a news article or, a, you know, a newsletter to, to check out kind of um, the, the posts that are on there, um, as well as checking out the toolkit as well, because there's a lot of great information on there. Any questions before I move on to, to pitch power, Emma? Mm, no, can't say any, Daniel. No trouble. Brilliant. So pitch power. Let's uh, let's have a look at it. So when the program was called the Grounds and Natural Turf Improvement Program, obviously we had a network of eight or nine regional pitch advisors. That's now changed and we do have a, a growing network of support pitch advisors. I must stress though, the entry point to any funding or support is, is pitch power. So whether you're able to carry out the pitch power inspections yourself as a club or you need support doing so, that is the entry level to support. We really, we've got to kind of, you've seen how the programme has grown and moving forward data is king and, and we do have to justify the work that we're doing and we really got to a point where we aren't, weren't able to service the the demand um for visits and reports to be carried out so pitch power was kind of coined up and, and launched and actually we've, we've met, almost made it better in terms of the ongoing support that's available and you know, don't be daunted by having to submit two applications per year. Previously, you know, when it was the Grounds and Natural Turf Improvement Programme, you'd have an initial visit and then a follow up visit, you know, a year to 18 months later, uh, where you'd have somebody on the ground. And 
as you'll see as I scroll through, we've kind of developed this to for you to be able to submit all the information um, that's required to assess a pitch. Obviously, you're going to get certain situations where it does require a visit, um, but in most cases, the information that we ask for allows us to make a judgment on the quality <coughs> and state of your pitch, as well as um, you know provide recommendations and um, maintenance. It's free to download and use, and again, we'll supply the link afterwards, but it, it, I would urge you to read the FAQs before jumping into it. Um, it's really easy to create an account. You just sign up and yeah, fill in your organization, locate your ground and add your pitches. Um, it does take a little bit of time, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour to get all set up and, and add your pitches. Um, and then you get on with the assessment and you can kind of use it as your own portal, an additional tool um, to have at your arsenal in terms of being able to record your own maintenance practices, what your contract is doing, the heights of cut you're cutting out, whether you've had, you know, got less or, or more weeds than last year. It really is a brilliant tool to record and monitor your pitches as, um, you know, the support progresses. So you'll be asked to perform, th if we're dealing with an 11 v 11 pitch, three inspections, inspection locations um, across that pitch. And, you know, you, you just look at this photo and you think, well, actually, why, why does the, you know, the regional pitch advisor want to know, you know, about grass height? And we'll touch on this later in the maintenance practices. You know, the, it's not just grass height we're looking at. We're looking at quality of cut, as you can see here. We're looking to you know how clean is the sward but you know this this um pitch looks like it needs a good brush or rake to kind of clear those yellow leaves out you know in the grass world you've always got one leaf like dying back and if you don't kind of clean it out that's going to form a, a thatch layer but also we're looking at you know as i said you know we are looking at height of cut in terms of if you're cutting at 30 mil now on your pitch power inspection, I'd probably urge you to to raise that if possible, depending on the standard um, that you're playing at. Um, and yeah, I, I mean this this is an example of a um, of a good kind of photo of grass height that's been submitted. It's really important that you do kind of look through the FAQs and and understand the requirements of each photograph and. Basically, the more that you can put into it and the, the better quality of image, you know, the, the more we can assist. You know, if I'm looking at this, I can see, well, actually, you wouldn't want to be cutting in these conditions. You know, you've got quite a heavy dew on there. So, I'd, you know, mention to be mindful of clearing dew before cutting because you're not going to get a good quality of cut. You're going to be bruising or tearing the leaf. You can see here there's not so much um, you know, shredding of the of the leaf. It looks like we can't really see cut. There, but it looks it looks reasonably clean. But it is if somebody was to submit this at this time of year, I'd probably say it's a bit low, and um, you know you'd be looking to clean the the sword out a little bit, or at least you know begin brushing. So that's um, grass height, and as I say, uh, it's it's required to submit three images um, per eleven v eleven pitch around all the all the pitches, and you know I know that sounds like quite a daunting. Um, thing to do you know it, but really when you get the hang of it, it it takes about 15 20 minutes per pitch and realistically if you're talking at two and a half grand annually for you know spending 20 minutes half an hour on the pitch submitting these photos so you get a detailed report of where you should be with your maintenance i don't think it's that big an ask and as i said for those people that really aren't comfortable with technology or it does seem daunting, support is available. So do contact Emma and either myself or more likely one of our support pitch advisors can get out and, and visit you on your site and, and offer guidance and, you know, encourage you to or show you how to, to complete the assessments um, on your own in the future. So we also ask for um, a picture of the surface profile. You'll see here we've got a grid of 100 squares, so that gives a percentage um, measured of, of grass, weeds uh, and any bare space. So bare space, we're doing quite well with this photo, but grass coverage is pretty poor. 
and you see some clippings that are lay on there. Um, as I said, this this is a photo from um, summer, and the reason that we ask for this is just so we can kind of measure where you are throughout the year in terms of we asked for two inspections. So obviously you'd expect grass cover to be less during the winter, but then maybe after your renovation, uh, you know, or, or some seeding, um, we can kind of find out where you are in terms of cover. And if you've had a, an application of a controlled um, herbicide to see how that's put the, um, knock the weeds back. So as I say, we, we asked for it in three reasonably high wear areas in terms of, well, I mean, the highest wear areas on the pitch in terms of your goal mouth, uh, your centre circle and the other um, goal mouth. But don't, you know, go where the keeper stands and send that through because, you know, everyone's got that best base there. It's a case of try to do it justice in terms of don't pick the worst area, don't pick the best area, but, um, you know, do pick areas that, that you can make informed recommendations on to kind of give a, um you know a reasonable assessment of, of the pitch an honest assessment of the pitch maybe i should say the other thing that's really important and this is an absolutely brilliant photo um, that was sent in you know it's taken the time to take it off the pitch um, and we measure your thatch level uh your root depth and your growing medium uh i mean this is you know really lucky whoever whoever's pitched this was because the the growing medium looks brilliant there it looks lovely and dark and and friable um but unfortunately given uh you know the location of a lot of um clubs in the region we sit on really heavy clay subsoil so drainage is 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 quite often an issue but you know however you take the the, the photograph just ensure that you've got the tape measure uh, next to it and and it really does give a good insight in terms of you know the, you know the the age old the age old analogy is um you know if you if your car's got a problem where's the first place you look you know and it's often you know you lift the bonnet up and you know that's the case with with grass pitches in terms of if you've, if you've got a problem on the surface we well, need to know what's going on um beneath and you know poor drainage is is kind of you know such a such a great problem um and, and, and unless you know about it you know by taking extracting a core and what your um soil composition is um you know how deep are the roots going have you got a thatch level that that's what we really need to know and can and can help you with and you know the, there's videos on the faq section in terms of how you can get you know, an extractor core like this. Um, you know, this is a reasonably large um, core that somebody's taken out just using uh, a spade, um, and and this will heal back in fine. You know, you don't need to be worried about extracting um, something. Just but just make sure that you do have a decent depth. You know, try and get a core out of at least a hundred mil, um, just so we can really see what's going on. There's no point in sending a you know a thirty mil core. Um, you know, soil profile free because we won't be able to understand what's going on deeper and that's where um, things are. If you do come in for funding, obviously this is a photo that I took and you can see my, my Cora has had quite a bit of use. Um, but again, uh, you can, funding is available to support the purchase of um, this, which is less intrusive. Uh, so you, you can use this on your pitch. Uh, to take a core out and again you can see exactly um you know why we're asking this in terms of if you have got an issue with draining that th drainage i think this sums up perfectly you've got a wet pitch you've got a thatch layer that's retaining all of the moisture bone dry beneath and, and compact and and you know this is just a, a shining example of why we asked to see um you know a, a sample like this and can make a recommendation accordingly because once you know you might not be aware if you look on the surface why why you're having issues with the pitch extract this and um i mean it, I, I hope that it comes across as being pretty obvious in terms of you've got an organic matter layer there at the top highlighted with the um you know the red the red arrows of about 20 mil beneath that yes you've got roots going down further but 
this profile is superbly like compact and needs kind of breaking up and to allow drainage to get lower and and you know try and regain control of the thatch layer. And the last photo that we asked you to take is an image of your line marking just to see kind of uh, I mean it's a good example actually here um, in terms of offering up you know a, a wider photo of, of how your pitch is looking um, and yeah you know I mean markers are available to be funded through the foundation uh, you know so a lot of you know don't make do with a poor marker if you, if you kind of if you need it replacing and obviously utilize the hive and the GMA's toolkit to to understand maybe more effective ways of marking what you can do and can't do when marking because gone are the days where you can burn lines in you know with petrol or some um, a, a couple of drops around up because it's a really poor pra practice and yeah we don't we, we don't recommend that at all anymore and yeah I think gone are those days but um yeah, so th this is your example of, of, of above standard line marking here in terms of, you know, the lines are, are nice and clear. Um, they're at the correct width, lovely and straight. Um, so yeah, that's that's the other image that's asked for. And then moving on to equipment, um, the I've got a couple of slides here. I, I won't bore you with pitch power all night. Um, but as I said, use it as a tool for you. The more information that you can provide, the better level of report is going to be produced. If you are coming in, you know, if you do submit a pitch power inspection because you're looking for new machinery, mention it, you know, because the, you know, that I won't know, you know, what the, the purpose of the report is if you, if you don't say, actually, we've got some issues on, um, you know our, our junior pitches they're holding a little bit more water we think we've got a thatch layer or you know we, we're looking to replace an old gang mower that we've been using for you know 30 to 40 years with something more um you know convenient and that we can add attachments to the back you know this person here i've used as an example he's got his usage hours on the tractor he's put his cut heights there for spring summer and autumn winter and it's just you know as a as i said the more that you can put into it the more you're going to get out of it and the same goes for maintenance. Uh, you know, budget is key, um, and to mention who's doing what. Um, and the bigger picture that you can kind of paint in for, a, you know, a regional pitch advisor, myself, or the support pitch advisors, um, the better quality of report, you know, and, and gaps or kind of better practice that we're going to be able to see and we're going to be able to offer. Um, so that's that's really important. And the other thing is to mention, you know, you could have we could, you know, give you all the best advice and that it could be brilliant. Um, but if you don't include the usage as well, we're not sure how often the pitch is being used. And, you know, grass pitches do not have an infinite um, level of use that they can support. Um, you know, I, I was at Wembley and we, we kind of had all the kit in the book. You know as many people as as you wanted that you know could could support you and assist you but the one thing that you couldn't control was time you know and the usage so really you know moving forward all of the support that's available all of the advice you have got to build a sustainable model within your club and within your pitch um usage um yeah, I can't stress that enough as well. And, you know, there is guidance around and, you know, often it doesn't take much to increase the usage levels of pitches. And we'll talk about best practice because uh, that can transfer, you know, transform. You might be doing everything that's recommended in the report, but potentially doing it at the wrong times or in the incorrect conditions. So we'll move on to that to that now. And with with all the information that you submitted and we talked about grass height we talked about root depth this is this is why it, it's asked because it, it's all plugged into a calculator and it, it comes out as a rating of um basic good advanced or or high and um it's a performance quality um standard 
and what we've developed as the GMA is that uh, if your pitch is basic, you know, it, it, it aligns with the um, pitch grading framework skills and knowledge matrix, you know, so basic to good, um, you know, the, the GMA's level one course is ideal. Move on to the GMA's level two course if you're looking to kind of sustain it at good or even move higher into advanced. Um, but it's a case of, yes, you're able to assess the pitch, but we've kind of created some information and courses there for you to, to provide, you know, improved skills and knowledge in terms of how to sustain that pitch at a good level because as you climb the ladder, you can see all the way up to elite. You know, the knowledge required to maintain Premier League pitches or, you know, even higher level football pitches is 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 different to kind of maintaining, you know, local authority or, or grassroots um, pitches. And and we're here to support you on that journey. You know, that's what I want to emphasize, emphasize with that. This next page is an example of the online level three. So advanced turf culture. So this is you're looking at um, kind of high to advanced to high level pitches. And you can see on the left hand side, we've got the online level ones. Uh, we've got the uh, winter pitches um, level two. Got a 3G course as well. And, and we, there's a whole suite. We do cricket as well. But in terms of the content, it's you know, you can see um, here on the bottom right hand side you know, that, that's the level as you move up the pyramid that we can support you with as your pitch progresses through the support of um, the county FA, the, the GMA and, and any funding that you receive through the foundation to, to maintain it. Anything on, on that, Emma, before we move on to some um, winter tips and, and best practice? Um, no questions, but Matt from Hambledon's made a really good point that you mentioned in the chat just about a tip for clubs if they're looking for new machinery grants needs to be mentioned in the pitch power report, which you touched on. Um, so to put it in the notes, otherwise the Football Foundation will reject it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, essentially, you know, you, uh, I mean, it's di it's difficult to put in that in that sense, but I, you know, as a, as a sub regional pitch advisor or support pitch advisor, we give you the information required to improve your pitch. If you're using an old tractor or an old piece of machinery, we recommend that you, you replace it. And, and it's up to you whether you do that tomorrow or in two years time. Um, but as I said, the, the, the more information that you can provide, the, the better. And, and with that pitch power report, as I said before, that's the entry level to any funding or support through the foundation. So, you know, it, it has to be stated when you I, I, I assume a lot of you will be familiar with um, the, the the portal on the foundation's website and it, it's just a big box that says looking for funding and there's lots of different but the way into it is is you sign up through there and and it'll ask you to upload your pitch power report and if it doesn't contain you know the machinery um, then it, it, it gets rejected or the foundation will come to me and ask to amend the report so you're better off doing it up front and painting a picture and actually, it's really beneficial to do that because I can advise on the type of equipment or machinery that would be, you know, beneficial to your pitch. Uh, you know, in most cases, we're looking at compact tractors with, um, you know, um, rotary decks um, on the back because they are cost effective in, in terms of maintenance. You know, if you're if you're taking a cylinder triple out at the moment. You know, I, I can only imagine the the worm casts and the, you know the 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 time that you're having to spend brushing the pitch off because you just don't get the quality of cut. And I've had that before previously with clubs coming to me and asking, you know, oh, we've heard you know cylinder cuts give a brilliant finish. Well, they do, but the maintenance is inherently more than that of a rotary mower. And actually, you know, going down the lines of having a compact tractor over a, um, you know, a purpose. Um, fairway triple it does open up a world of opportunity because you could sling a turf groomer on the back uh, you know you could slitter um, put a, a slitter on the back of it and even you know in terms of if you wanted to if you do have a larger site and wanted to start performing this some of your own decompaction it's just you know as I said kind of um, use it as a tool and um, 
you know, submit as much information as you can and kind of make your intentions known when you do submit. Um, so I'll move on to um, conscious of time. We're, we're 10 to 8 now and kickoff's not far if you wanted to catch the Champions League. So we'll, we'll try and rattle through these. Try and do a minute on each on each slide. And as I said, I'll send these out after and you've kind of got the information there. So grass cutting. I would stress at this time of year, the longer that you can leave the grass, the better. Obviously, there is a, um, you know, the caveat in terms of you, it can't be, you know, 70 mil because you're not going to be able to kick a ball through it. But if you are able to raise the height of cut um, to, you know, between 35 and 40, if you can get away with that, then it's going to do you a world of favours because it's increased cover and what you're doing as well is the longer it is on top you're promoting um, increased root depth beneath and that's going to help you with um, stability of the pitch. Um, other things to note is it's really good to alternate the um, direction that you cut in. Um, little and often is always better than, than whacking it down. Obviously at the moment we're probably not getting a lot of growth through um, and and certainly over these next two weeks when it does turn cold, you know, you really got to kind of look out on the pitch and, and think to yourself, well, actually, does this need cutting? You know, only cut when the grass is telling you it, it needs, you know, cutting. And similar to how you, you know, if you know what your mower's set at, you know, same as it asked you to do in the pitch power report, jump out and measure your grass. There's no, there's nothing stopping you. Don't kind of leave it to visual interpretation. Go out and measure your grass and think, well, actually, you know, if if the um, rotary deck set at 35 mil and we're only up to 40 now, do we need to cut this week? You know, can we get away with it and do it? You know, and actually this time is, is critical for um, not taking heavy machinery on the pitch because it does increase compaction um yeah just just um little and often really and, and in in terms of if you are looking for presentation and you do have a compact tract and you've got a um a deck on the back of it you know look at getting a brush and in terms of if you can stripe it up with a brush during the winter you know you're doing a couple of things there a you're not cutting it so you're leaving the grass longer but you are kind of offering that presentation uh, and it's really beneficial for the grass plant to open the sward back up, move any, uh, knock any dew off the leaf, uh, and, and just kind of get some air around the base of the plant. Uh, I'll move on to the next slide. And as I said, these are, we'll get these out to you. So aeration or decompaction. In my opinion, now that we've had the weather turn cold, we've probably missed the boat on, on decompaction. Um, it's always really difficult to cool, but when you start to kind of experience the first few frosts, really you don't want to kind of be really opening the ground up and creating, um, you know, these fiscus because it, it does kind of shock the rooting system. Um, by all means, now we want to be looking at opportunities to get the slitter out and the or the slant or the, the star slitter to just open that surface up. As I said, if you are cutting and you are experiencing play, that surface can get capped off, especially with the um, heavier clay. So you just want to be opening it back up and it's really beneficial to kind of sustain that drainage capacity of the pitch. Um, but also have that, that, that gas exchange um, continue. So when you do have an opportunity to get out, if you have got a slitter, um, do pick your opportunities wisely um, and sometimes less is more, but if you can get out, you have to work to the conditions. Seeding, again, you know, now that temperatures have dropped, we're probably not looking at um, full pitch seeding. You know, I think that that opportunity has passed us by, but by all means, um, isolated repairs to go mouse and as I said, you know, in terms of aeration, if you are starting to see your goal mouse holding water or center circles holding a little bit of water and suffering from um, a, a loss of cover, you know, please do get out with your fork 
and, and spend 15 minutes, you'd be amazed at the difference that it can make. 15 minutes in, in your goal mouth and centre circle after a game just to open it back up and, and gently heave it back. Get, it, get the tines as deep as you can go and just gently heave it back up um, because it will compact. And then um, there's a there's a really interesting slide that I'll show you after after this one. But yeah, by all means, isolated seeding. If you do have the means to have um, put some germination sheet down, do that. If you haven't got germination sheet because it's expensive, um, you know, speak to your local scaffolder because they're brilliant as well to kind of conserve. Um, it's not so much conserving the moisture, but it does help as it really does keep the heat in uh, to, to encourage and accelerate um, germination and establishment. Um, so, yeah, by all means, you, you are going to have to kind of keep going with your overseeding and your repairs uh, in, in these isolated areas. If you lose it, it's incredibly difficult to, to bring it back. So if there's one thing that you do take away from this is that you know, it might look brilliant at the moment, but when it coverage drops to 80% and lower, you know, that's when it does, the, the snowball does start to go and you are going to start holding water in your goal mouths. And, and even, um, you know, even before a game, a, a couple of handfuls in your goal mouth and, and the keeper will do the work for you in terms of putting it into the ground. Um, but do brush it down after, keep it, keep it clean, uh, the goal mouth and, and, get some holes in it and kind of and, and dress it back up. You might want to use a, a kind of a, a, a higher sand soil um, quantity that you, you might you that you'd be familiar with dressing the pitch in terms of if you're dressing the pitch, um, you're ideally using a higher sand. But I mean, even if you're using a 50 50 mix of specialist, um, you know, grounds dressing sand soil, or 70 30 because you do want to have a little bit of binding strength in in the goal mouth um by all means please do not put any you know high organic matter or heavy soil in the goal mouth because it will not do you any favors but you want to keep it kind of um topped over and level because you know it, when things do go that far you are looking at a situation like we've got on the top left there in terms of you're never going to be able to grow grass in that because grass doesn't grow underwater and you can see there where it's not been repaired and you're in a situation like we've got at the bottom when you're looking at complete return you can do that to a certain extent you know if you are experienced for example penalty spots if you do have an area off the pitch which you can resod in um you, you can do that but just be mindful of what you take out you're going to have to put back and the more you take out the heavier it is to to cart over again and you know I, I say one thing is if you do dig an area out and, and replace it make sure you take you know a good six to eight inches because you want the full root zone there um you know you, you can't just top off the top uh 25 30 mil and expect it to kind of sit back and, and flourish you do need to replace it um yeah so don't leave yourself in a situation like this. When your goal mouths start going, uh, do be mindful of it. Get some holes into it. Get some dressing. Alleviate that that compaction and get some seed into it. And you know this is the worst thing because this is an absolute, I mean, nightmare to to bring back. And you are looking at a complete return. Um, and you can do this all over the pitch. You know, an hour out with a divoting fork and a podcast or your headphones. You know, it, it's a it's a really I say nice way to spend an afternoon. I, I enjoy doing it. And hopefully if you're on this call, uh, you know, you enjoy what you do as well. Um, but yeah, that was that was my happy place, you know, out, out in the, on the pitch and, you know, know, knowing that I was good, doing good and, and um, you know, and spending an hour, an hour and a half putting back those divots and, and just knocking them back with a little bit of divot mix and, and seed. So turf grooming. Um, we, talk, we talked on it earlier. Um, good surface hygiene is is really key to having um, a happy grass plant and happy sward. Um, as I said, there's always one leaf dying back at any given time on your grass plant. So if that builds up, you are going to have yourself a thatch um, problem over time. The other thing is using a tool like this, you might negate 
you know, having to commit to having a heavy scarification done, depending on the thatch layer that you've currently got at, at end of season renovations. I always point to it, but little and often, if you can do that, um, then it, it's going to be, um, you know, beneficial in the long term. You'll see on the front of this, they've got the, the slitter. Again, a brilliant tool and it just opens up the pitch, allows gas exchange and it, it allows you to connect with those um, deeper tine holes from the slitter or, um, you know, a decompaction unit that you've that you've had previously on the pitch. Um, yeah, given the opportunity, whenever you can get a brush over it to stand the pitch back up, uh, to stand the grass back up, clear the dew and um, get some air around the sward. Uh, turf nutrition. Yeah, we've probably missed the boat now on, on applying a, a controlled release fertiliser. Really, we do recommend an autumn, winter and a spring, summer. Um, obviously, they're very different makeups. Um, but a spring, summer now, when the you know frost is, has passed us and grass starts to um, you know want to pick back up, you know, and you might have lost some coverage previously. The best thing you know that you can do is get some deep tine holes into it and get a, a spring summer feed on it to, to pick everything back up. Um, as I say, you know, it's a, it's a different makeup that we put through um, on it uh, um, during the winter. It, it's, it's more of a, a turf hardener to, you're not trying to encourage growth. You're trying to, um, you know, increase re disease resistance and, and recovery of the grass plant after use. Um, but I think it's, it's probably a little bit um, too late in the year. Uh, for that now. So best practice, this is two slides left. So focus on height of cut, the frequency and conditions that you're cutting in, and that includes the quality of cut that your mow has given you as well. Uh, you know, if you're using a rotary unit, you know, replace the blades or sharpen the blades frequency in it uh, frequently, and it is going to give you a better uh, standard of cut. You know, don't cut when it's dewy, don't cut when the pitch is holding water or too wet. You know, often the temptation is to get out there because you feel like you should be doing something. But in most cases, take a step back and kind of ask yourself, do I need to be doing this? What are the outcomes going to be? Is it going to be a better situation or worse situation if it's a 50 50? Um, brushing, if you can get out to clear dew, it does print a pattern in, stand everything back up and allow airflow around this ward. Do you get out on the pitch? Um, you know, post-match or, or pre-match if you want to put some some seed down, um, hand fork areas uh, and and, and um, apply a bit of dressing and, and divot mix. Uh, where possible, avoid the use of heavy equipment on the pitch, especially in the wet. Um, you know, it's, uh, I've seen it before when, you know, it's been the uh, clubs have used slitters to try and kind of relieve water um, on waterlogged pitches and it's just made it 10 times worse. It's really hard to do and I know it is, but often you, the best thing to do is to walk away when it when it's like that and, and just keep off it and it'll, and it'll you know, you'll take one step forward rather than taking two steps back. Um, do you keep the surface open? Um, identify, look for these windows um, in the weather to to get on and you know not only dry weather look for when the wind's picking up as well um, because if you've got a couple of dry cold windy days that's a really good opportunity to kind of um, be able to get on and get on with the, with the work that you want to be doing and there's something that I often you know share and, and say but knowing when not to do something is often more important than knowing when to do something so, you know, it works both ways in that sense. So in summary, um, keep yourself updated, use the tools that are, are out there for you in terms of getting on the hive, you know, having to think about submitting a pitch power inspection, uh, looking at the GMA's toolkit to find out, um, you know, what, what this thing uh, that's been reported in your pitch power, you know, report refers to. You know, keep in touch with Emma and myself and the support pitch advisors to find out what's going on in Surrey and, you know, when the next webinar is or by all means do provide feedback on this one. And, you know, we're here to support you, you know, tell us what you'd like to, to have covered in the next one. 
Um, focus on the possible and ask why are you doing something? So what am I trying to achieve by what I'm doing? Um, if you ask yourself that question every time you walk out onto the pitch doing something, you know, it, it's just being that bit more mindful of um, best practice and it does go a long way. So reach out and speak to each other, use the Hive portal. We are going to look to um, bring in a more regional um, portal if you, you know, where you can communicate with your, um, you know, clubs close to you uh, in terms of putting it all under um, a Surrey CFA um, banner, but that's a little bit way of a way off at the moment. We're just kind of working out how that, how to model that. And do plan ahead, you know, as I said before, it, you know, in terms of your maintenance, in terms of your funding, in terms of your usage, just, you know, look that step further in terms of, okay, short term, medium and long term on, on anything that you do. Um, yeah, plan ahead for your maintenance work, but just always keep an eye on the weather and leave yourself an out. Um, so thank you for joining we've ran a couple of minutes over so i'm not sure if there's been any goals in the champions league or the dinner's burning in the oven or anything but i hope we haven't kept you too long and and again you know thank you for joining it it, it is a you know a mark to have you here and um you know anything that you can suggest or feedback on uh, because we want to assist you moving forward and as i said i'll get the information that i've covered tonight out to you in terms of the presentation all of the links I'll send it over to Emma and hopefully she'll get that out in the next couple of days. But yeah, by all means, I really hope that you found this evening helpful. Thank you for joining. And um, if you want to pop on with any questions, you know, we can spend another 10 minutes or so if, if there is any um, questions or any topics anybody wants to discuss um, before we head off for the evening. Daniel, thank you so much and thank you everyone for joining this evening. Hopefully you found it useful. And as Daniel said, if you've got any questions, please pop them in the chat or just just come unmuted. Um, if not, obviously, feel free to jump off the call and we'll get the slides and the recording sent out to you um, hopefully this week. Yeah, we'll spend another 30 seconds or a minute, Emma, and if nothing comes through, we'll... Yeah, no worries. That's great. Oh, Paul's going to share... Paul from Camberley's going to share some pictures. Because he's oh, doing brilliant. a study for us, so that'll be good. Yeah, yeah, well, please to receive those, Paul. Matt kiley has got a question. Any tips on dealing with worms? Yeah, so at the moment, uh, there's not a lot available uh, to... to um, deal with worms or suppress worms and the products are out there um, I mean if you've asked the question you've probably done some research into them um, they're not targeted at worms it is a byproduct of applying them that they do um, deal with worms but in the world that we live in all I can recommend you really is to pick your opportunities and um, you know, go out there with a firm, firm brush. As I said to you before, there was a post on the hive where you know every man and his dog, um, you know, went through a phase of building these, you know, handmade brushes that they were stinging on the back of their their tractors and, and cutting decks. Have a look and see if you can find that post on hive. I'll have a look as well to see if I can find it. And really, it is just a case of um, you know retaining good ground cover because that's going to, um, you know, minimise the impact from worm castings. Really, you know, I think, um, you know, this is something going back to my apprenticeship, but there's 20 species of um, ground worms in the, in the UK, and only four of them are casting worms. So really, you know they're doing benefit under the ground it's only the four species that aren't doing benefit that leave all these um you know the worm casts on but yeah you know i know they're hard to come by at the moment but when you do get a crisp um a crisp day you know you, you can get out there with a brush on the back of a of your mower to disperse them and break them down but it, they are you know they are a pain um the other thing if it is a real long-term problem um they don't much like sand 
so you can look at incorporating, uh, you know, sand top dressing to your end of season renovations and, and improving your soil structure uh, and, and composition from increased sand dressings. But, you know, it's, it's not a cheap operation. And, and at the moment, you know, I can't sit here and, and go against the product or recommend the product, but, you know, have a you know have a have a look and talk to others to see what especially the guys in you know cricket and, and other grounds um are using but uh, i mean moving forward you know carbenzene was banned um a few years ago that used to wipe everything out uh you know and that's why it was was banned so you know we we look at kind of um integrated pest management and i can offer you some you know, cultural practices in terms of, you know, waiting for that dry day to, um, to knock them around and also to step, you know, retaining good ground cover. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where I think I'll leave it, leave it with that one. Thanks, Daniel. Anything else, Emma? Nothing else has come through. So I think probably it if unless there's anything else that's going to come through in the next few seconds, we'll probably stop recording and leave you all to enjoy your evening. Brilliant. And and thanks again, everyone, for um, for joining this evening. And do please, uh, you know, provide feedback. Um, we want to make these sessions relevant for yourselves and support you going forward. So any information that you can pass over that's going to help with the next one and what topics you'd like to cover, please, please do. Um, you know, sing out and get in touch. Brilliant. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, all. Take care. Have a lovely evening.